By now, everyone should be full aware that we are under a demonic system. We're under a demonic rule. We're in a time where right becomes wrong and wrong has become right. There's no such thing as moral values now. And if there is moral values, it's at an individual level and it's kept silent. It's kept silent because people are afraid that if they speak righteousness, if they speak truth to power, then they will become under demonic attack. Now, the purpose of this video, this is an image from the 70s. It's a movie that used to come on every Sunday around one o'clock titled Monster Movie Matinee. But I'm not here to talk about the movie or the show Monster Movie Matinee. I use this image because of the hand that's in this image. The gothic hand with the rings and with the black nail polish. Yesterday, I walked into the post office. And there's a white dude that worked in the post office, always been, seemed quite normal to me. But yesterday when I walked in, his fingers, his fingernails were painted blue and black. And it stood out. I'm standing in line, he's helping this lady out, and his nail polish, the nail polish on his fingers caught my attention. So when I got up to the register, I kind of commented on it and joked about it. And the other black woman that was there, she also, you know, joined in with me. She agreed with me because it was something that was quite different. Now, I completely understand that we are not really quite into October, but there's people that celebrate Halloween. And that's okay if you choose to do that. Halloween comes once a year, but Halloween to many is every day. Because every day that we live, we see demonic activity. People live their lives demonically. People paint their fingernails. People cover their bodies in tattoos piercings through their nose, through their lips, through their ears. So we're living in times where the devil is ruling. And there's people that may say that he's always ruled because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but Satan or Lucifer is the prince and power of the air that works in the children of disobedience. I didn't mean to go there, but this dude was wearing fingernail polish. And then I watched an interview today on The Breakfast Club with Dennis Rodman. Now, Dennis Rodman came out a long time ago and said that he was bisexual. Many look at Dennis Rodman as weird or strange. But Dennis Rodman also had painted fingernails. Hollywood has always given us information that in most times we ignore. We look at it as fictionist. We look at it as uh, something that's not real. It's entertainment. But Hollywood puts a lot of truth into entertainment. They show you what your future could be. They show you what's coming. Just recently, I was watching this news video and I was looking at the way the police were dressed in their tactical gear. And it took my mind back to movies that I saw 
in the 70s and 80s. And at that time, what we see now was only futuristic. It seemed unreal. It seemed like something that could never happen. Now we're in times where it's actually a reality. I'm seeing a reality that was shown back in the 70s and the 80s, but it was only looked at as entertainment. Back to my topic. I keep getting sidetracked because I have so many thoughts coming to mind and so much information that I could share and I will share in a later video. But Dennis Rodman was wearing fingernail polish. I've seen other guys wearing fingernail polish. And what they don't realize is they've actually taken on the image of the beast. They've taken on the image of death. They've taken on the image of goth. There are so many black dudes that are gothic, but it's very subtle. You can see the goth in their tattoos. You can see the goth in their piercings. You can see the goth in the type of tattoos that they cover their bodies with. So we're in a satanic system and it's interesting that so many people, primarily so-called black people, have taken on the same satanic system that oppressed them and their so-called ancestors. So notice that so many black men have become gothic have taken on the image of death. And much of that death, black men, black females, are experiencing in this life. You can't play on the devil's playground and not expect the devil to one day show up. I'm gonna repeat that again, and I've been saying this for the longest. You cannot play on the devil's playground and not expect him to one day show up. So when you see a black man or a black male wearing fingernail polish, and I'm not talking about those that uh, claim to be gay or transgender because they've already bought into the satanic system. Because everything that we were taught that was right is now considered wrong and hateful. You become hateful for thinking righteously. And you're well accepted for thinking what I was taught to be wrong. So, so many so-called black males bought into this satanic system. So then a thought comes to my mind. If you become a part of the satanic system, can you really complain about any injustice that come to you? Can you really complain about how God allows certain things to take place in your life? A life that you designed and created for yourself because you had the choice and free will to accept this satanic system or reject it. But you chose to take on the image of the beast. You chose to look like your father, your spiritual father that's in hell. My father is in heaven. Your father is in hell. So it's natural for us to be in opposition against one another. So now when you see two black men going at it, or two black women going at it, or black women going against black men and vice versa, maybe it's because of the fact that they're fighting a spiritual warfare. God is not the author of confusion. 
And much of the confusion that we see that's taking place in the lives of many, even in this country, is a result of this demonic, satanic system. So, so many black men, again, I repeat, have taken on the satanic image by becoming gothic. We used to always think that the white people were gothic. You know, and th these are the people that we see in school. Uh, the girls got their hair dyed black, or even the dudes, and they cut their hair in a mohawk, or they cut it in a, or, or they may have different colors in their hair. They may have the funny looking rings. Now, the same thing that's accepted as the norm, especially when you see these dudes with these holes in their ears and these big old hoops, or going th piercing through their, through their lip, or their tongue, or their nose. And I saw this one image where this black dude had piercings all over his face. Well, there was a time we only seen white people do that. Young white kids that were confused about their life. And these were usually the kids that were outcast. Nobody really hung out with them. No one had anything to do with them unless they too were a goth. So the goth usually like were quiet. They saved to themselves. They seemed weird. They were into uh, Wiccan or witchcraft, which now we see so many so-called black females and black males right on YouTube. That's now claiming to be a witch or a warlock or a soothsayer doing tarot cards and Ouija boards. Now, I must admit, I don't see too many Ouija boards because I think there's people that's riding the line. There's a lot of satanic people and even goth people or people that claim to be witches and warlocks. And males are also witches too, but they're referred to as warlocks. But I don't really see them playing with Ouija boards too often because now they're really dabbling into the spirit realm. Because there's no telling what they're going to draw or bring in from the other side. So to a certain extent, even they themselves fear the unseen. They'll get on YouTube and pretend like they have all of this satanic and spiritual knowledge. But then when you really look into their own personal lives, yes, they've invited demons in. But yet, when you start delving into the Ouija board, even when you put that board aside, the portal is still open. When it says goodbye and you think you're closing that board out, you're not really closing that board out. That portal is still open. And trust me, you will have entities coming in from the other side. And then these entities will deceive you. They will speak to you and give you revelation or you think is revelation and don't realize that they're only destroying you. They're only conditioning you and preparing you to take over you and your life. So then you hear these voices speaking to you. You start having these dreams and these visions. Now in the Bible, it talks about in the latter days, when men will see visions, older men will see visions and old, younger men will dream dreams or something to that effect. And he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. You know, what you don't realize, and I didn't mean to come this direction, what you don't realize, when the Most High says, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, now, those of us who are in Christ and that have Christ within us, we understand that the Holy Spirit of Yah does not dwell in an unclean temple. And notice, 
The scripture does not say, I will pour out my spirit and fill you or fill all flesh. It says he will pour out his spirit upon, upon all flesh. Does that mean that the Holy Spirit rests upon you? Because keep in mind, when you get into the book of Revelation, and it talks about those spirits that stand before the throne of God, what type of spirits are they referring to? Think about that for a moment. Just because a spirit or the Most High sends out a spirit does not mean that that is a righteous spirit. Because there were times past, if you read in the scriptures, there was a time when the Most High sent out a lying spirit and had prophets lie to the people, deceive the people, because the people were unrighteous. The people were rejecting truth. So what he did was he sent a lying spirit out to them. So when you hear the scripture where it says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, does not mean that that's a holy and righteous spirit. The act of the Most High sending out his spirit upon all flesh is righteous and holy. But the actions of that spirit to the person that receives that spirit is not righteous and holy, if you could understand what I'm saying. So when the Most High says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and my sons and daughters shall prophesy, your sons and daughters shall prophesy and see visions and dream dreams. Are my young and old men. So when you prophesy, but yet you're living an ungodly lifestyle, when you prophesy according to that spirit that was sent out from the Most High and you're unrighteous and unholy, then you're prophesying and preaching against yourself. You're judging yourself through the spirit that was sent out upon all flesh. So you condemn yourself for having that righteous, unrighteous spirit upon you. It's righteous because it was sent out by the Most High. It's unrighteous because of the acts that it caused in your life, if that makes sense. So when you start delving into the unseen and you start having dreams and you start having visions and in your mind, you believe that it's a vision from the most high for you to prophesy truth to the people, that spirit that is upon you and that possesses you just may be a lying spirit that was sent from the most high to condemn you because a righteous man and the righteous woman cannot receive that unrighteous spirit or that lying spirit of the most high unless it's in his will but i didn't mean to go there i have to study that a little bit more because now I'm teaching myself some information that I never thought about upon that spirit that's sent out from the Most High. Because like I mentioned in the Old Testament, the Most High sent out a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. A lying spirit. So feedback, tell me what you think. This is quite interesting, got me thinking now, and I have to go back and do some more research and study. But he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says.
to the church. Until next time, I'm fearless. <laughs>